Hello and welcome to this Oracle Business Intelligence training series. Today we are going to be discussing repository development. Our course agenda is to cover the physical layers, the physical keys and aliases, joins, the business model and mapping layer, dimensions, the presentation layer, subject areas, deploying an RPD, testing an RPD, opening an RPD online, and variables. First we're going to cover the admin tool. The admin tool is the software used to modify and create the repository file, also known as the RPD file. The RPD file contains the logical metadata for the OBIEE server. It is split into layers, the physical, the BMM, and the presentation layer. We can open an RPD file in two modes, online mode and offline mode. The physical layer is a representation of the physical data source that OBIEE connects to, e.g. the relational databases, cubes and flat files. Right now I'm going to open up our session and we're going to look at, at the Oracle Business Intelligence Administration tool. So to begin, what we're going to do is we're going to the Start menu and we're going to click BI Administration. Now as you can see we have the BI administration tool open. At the top of our menu, we can see our toolbar where we can create a new RPD, open an RPD offline, open an MDS XML file, open an RPD online. And you can see in the file menu, we can also do this online or offline. What we are going to do to begin with is we are going to create a new RPD file. To do this, we are going to go to the file menu, select new repository, and we are going to click OK. Here we can see we are presented with a new menu where we enter specific details for our repository file. We are going to give the repository file a name, a location of the desktop so we can find it easily, we're not going to import metadata because we're going to create the physical layer ourselves. If we wanted to have the wizard create it, we would import metadata and select yes. We're going to give it a password and then we're going to click next. Here you can see that we have created an RPD file. You can see the three layers of the, the repository file the physical layer, the business model and mapping layer, also known as the BMM, and the presentation layer. The physical layer is the, rep is the physical data sources that OBIEE connects to, e.g. the relational databases, the cubes, and the flat files. So to begin our repository development, we are going to concentrate on the physical layer. The purpose of the physical layer is to tell the, ser the OBIEE server how the objects within the physical data sources are related to each other. For example, the joins that exist between physical tables in a, f in a relational database system. The knowledge of these physical relationships is what allows the OBIEE server to create the correct query to send to the data source to retrieve data. A database object can in fact have many types. It can be a different uh, relational database such as SQL Server, DB2 or Oracle. It can be a multi-dimensional system such as SAP BW, SBase, HFM. It can be any ODBC compliant data source or a flat file such as a XML file. What we are going to do now is we are going to import a database into our physical layer. How we do this? We go to the file menu and we click import metadata. We select a connection type. In my case I'm using an Oracle database as my data source. 
So I select OCI 10G 11G. Here I specify my data source name, my username, and my password. If you don't know what your data source name, uh, username, and password is, then I can make a quick suggestion that you open up a new Explorer window and you search for, within your root dir directory, search for tnsnames.aura. Uh, once you locate this file and you open it, you will see at the bottom the address of your server. In my case, my server name is server, port number 1521, and the service name ORCL. We can use these details to create our data so source name here. Because I already know that I've created my database on my local host, I can just type localhost semicolon the port number, which we saw was 1521, forward slash the service name ORCL. Now we had to create a schema within our data source that has sample data that we're going to use to create our analytics with. We created this sample schema under this specific user and gave this user permissions to access the schema. Now this is the username and the password that we're going to specify here. If you want to test th that these details work, you can open up the start menu go to the command prompt and type in SQL plus. Then we can enter these uh, username details and password to confirm that we are allowed to connect to the data source. Here we can see that I was able to successfully connect to the Oracle database and if I select select star from user tables I can see can see that I have 11 rows returned within this schema so I specify those same username credentials here I select next and I only select tables I do not want to create keys the reason for this is that we are going to create the keys manually at a later step here you can see the data data source view I already know that my schema is called BI sample, so I expand this and I'm looking for specific tables that I want to work with. I want sample offices dimension. I select this and then select the arrow import selected. I am then given a connection pool. Connection pool objects hold the information that the OB server needs to successfully make the connection to the physical data source. Each database in the physical layer must contain at least one connection pool. A connection pool contains properties to indicate the maximum number of concurrent connections allowed through the connection pool. If using a shared login, the username and password to use, and other credentials. Each database object can contain multiple connection pools. It's important to note that the first connection pool under a database will be used for satisfying queries from OBIEE and that you can order the connection pools so the first one will be used first. For instance, it is best practice to create dedicated connection pools for initialization blocks. Um, while the database and the connection pools can be created manually, it is generally a better idea to import much of the physical layer as possible using the import wizard. But in our tutorial today, we're going to do some things manually just so you get a better feeling of how everything works. So we can just click OK here. You can see that I have now imported sample offices D. We also want sample customers dimension, so we select this sample revenue fact so we select this and sample products dimension so we select this and import so you should now see that we have a connection pool a database catalog and schemas we can click finish and save just as a side note the physical tables represent the tables or the cubes in the underlying data source usually they are imported using the metadata wizard 
However, uh, it is also possible to create physical tables manually. You can do this by right-clicking the schema and selecting New Physical Table. Here you can select the name and the table type, for example, a stored procedure or a select statement. The select statement is what you would use to create something called an opaque view, similar to a materialized view. As before, we can also create new physical columns. So see, under Sample Customer's Dimension, we have all of these columns. If we select the table, we can select New Object Physical Column. Here we can specify the name of the column, the type, and the properties. Physical tables in OBIEE should have a primary key defined. This lets the server know that this is the unique identifier for a row in that physical table. Keys are defined in the physical table properties, which are found by double-clicking on a physical table. So I double-click on a table, I can define in here the key for the table. Here you can see that I have defined the customer key as the primary key of customer's dimension. We will follow this step for the rest of the tables. For sample offices D, we will create the office key as the primary key. So again, we double click sample offices, we select the keys tab, we type in the name of the key, office key. Under columns, we then select office key and press OK. Here we can see the key symbol appears next to the office key. For products, we repeat this step again, but we select the product key. So we type prod key, then we specify that in the drop down product key. We click OK. You can see that this, the primary key has been created. Finally, for sample revenue fact, we double click and we specify order number as the key. Here you can see that the primary key has been created. This allows a developer to see at a glance in the physical layer where the primary keys are. The next step is to create physical aliases on our physical tables. They allow for separation of the object holding the physical structure, which is the physical table, and the objects used to define the relationships, the aliases. So how we create a physical alias? We right click customer's dimension, we select new object, alias. Here I will enter the details of the alias and click OK. Here you can see an alias has been created which replicates the customer dimension. We will repeat this step for the remaining tables. We select sample offices D, new object, alias. We repeat it again for the product's dimension. If I double click on one of our newly created aliases, you can see here that the source table is sample revenue fact. You can see the columns and the key and the foreign keys. When we create aliases, we have to create the keys as well. So the final step is to create the physical keys on each of the alias tables as we have done previously.